Welcome to Wordwise, where we delve deeply in the Word of God, discover what it means, and how to apply it to our lives. We're continuing to talk about expectations out of the Gospel of Luke as we prepare for a new year and as we celebrate the coming of our Emmanuel, our God with us. It's important to talk about expectations and the early uh, events around the birth of Jesus. We all know the traditional Christmas stories, but we don't often go beyond that in Luke chapter 2. So we're focusing in on Simeon who had great expectations for what God would do in his life and woke up every day understanding that God would keep his promises and that Simeon would see the birth of Messiah and would indeed be around for uh, the Messiah uh, finally being given as the promised um, Savior for God's people and beyond. So last week we talked about Simeon and his first interaction with Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. And now this is the prophecy that Simeon makes for the future of this amazing child Jesus. So if you read with us, please, starting in Luke chapter 2, verses 36 through 38. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, but he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked with everyone about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. Luke chapter 2, 33 through 38, it does begin with uh, the middle of the story as Simeon is talking with Mary and Joseph and uh, as he's holding the the baby Jesus and praying over him and being such so delighted that God has brought such an amazing promise. And again, we talked about how Simeon would have lived in expectation daily as God had promised him that he would not die before he saw Messiah. And that every day he'd wake up with that expectation of what God would do in this day. And every night as he went to sleep, he would maybe be slightly disappointed, but at the same time framing it all from a divine perspective, from having holy expectations, being fully surrendered to God. Simeon would go to bed and understand that God's promise would be kept. And maybe it would be kept tomorrow or maybe days in the future. But he would see the Messiah and he would understand that God had fulfilled his promise. And that's the way he lived and the way he chose to live every day. Despite discouragement and the disillusionment of his day, he chose to live with holy expectations that God would do something great. And indeed he did. Simeon got to hold the baby and understand the fulfillment that God had brought through this baby. And again, he wouldn't see it in his physical lifetime. He wouldn't see the fulfillment of the promise, but he trusted God that much that he could understand that God had kept his promise personally to Simeon, so God would keep all the rest of his promises to the people, uh, to his people, to bring a savior for first for the Jews, but then also for the Gentiles, for all people. And as he makes this prediction, he makes this prophecy, he's speaking directly to Mary. And perhaps decades later, Luke interviewing Mary, this, this really set in her mind, and she really held on to it. Because what Simeon says is this child will grow up to cause many in Israel to, to fall, to stumble. In other words, some of the great people that by the world standards would fall uh, because they would be too prideful to understand this Jesus not the Messiah they necessarily expected, the military leader they expected, the political hero they wanted, but this Jesus would be different, bringing a much much more eternal perspective and a much more eternally valuable type of salvation from sin and death and freedom from the tyranny of sin and death. So they would fall. That's, that comes true in the ministry of Jesus 30 years later, as many of the leaders of his day did not follow, did not understand who he was, and did not accept him as as fully God and fully human and Messiah. They denied that and they fell as a result. But it would also, this, this child would also bring much joy to many, many who were excluded by their culture and marginalized and pushed to the side and, and downtrodden. It would bring great joy to the poor, great joy to the, those who were widowed or orphaned, great joy to the world's forgotten and the world's uh, pushed aside and forsaken. Many, many would come to find joy in Jesus, in his earthly ministry and beyond. So that prophecy comes true as well. And Simeon is, is, is speaking directly to Mary too and saying this, this will take a long time to come to fruition and the reality is you're going to be there 
as you see this happening. And you may not understand, you may not fully believe, but live with this expectation that this child someday will fulfill his calling to do what God has led him to do, to seek and save the lost. And that was what Mary will witness. And this very difficult reality will also be a sword that pierces her heart at the end of the prophecy in verse 35, because Mary will someday stand at the cross and watch as her miraculous child, the, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, is sacrificed in such a horrific way as he's crucified, dead, and buried. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, will be around to see all that and witness all that. And imagine the emotional toll that that takes uh, as she witnesses maybe someone she believed in beyond just being her child, but someone she understood was her Savior as well, just as she proclaimed in Luke chapter 1 that he, this child would, would be her Savior as well as a Savior to all. And watching as that apparently comes to an end there on the cross. How horrific would that be? And then Simeon is able to, to help her understand that reality too. So that's a very difficult type of thing to end his prophecy with, but I think it shows again the, the future that is, is going to come true, but the expectation that Mary needs to live with and understand that this is not an ordinary child and it will not have an ordinary ending in any way, shape, or form. And even at the cross, she needs to remember to have faith and trust in God's promises and that God will keep his promises and that she can live in expectation even at that moment as well. And then we finish this passage with meeting Anna, a woman that we have a whole lot of detail about her, her background, her backstory, her lineage, but not a whole lot of detail on what she said. And that's what's so interesting about this. She comes along as another witness. In Jewish culture, in the first century especially, you needed two witnesses to make something valid, to testify of the same thing. You needed two witnesses to, to sort of be validated and to be trusted as reliable. Not just one, but two and so that's the purpose of Anna. She's the second witness that this baby is not just an ordinary child. Though he's from a poor family, a rather average family, while there appears to be nothing special about them, Simeon has made a very big public deal that he is indeed something pretty special and spectacular form of Messiah. And Anna comes along to bring another witness to that. It tells us that she is a widow of 84 years old. She had been widowed a long time ago. And it says that she had lived day and night in the temple. Now, we're not sure if that actually means she physically lived in the temple or if she was dependent on those around the temple for her welfare, for her care. Uh, widows in those days were, were not uh, in good shape. They had needed a lot of help. And so it's possible that, that just means that she was dependent on those uh, at the temple and the institution of the temple to care for her and to provide her financial stability because she wouldn't have had that in her own family. And the idea there that she's widowed for a long time is to indicate she probably didn't have children uh, to support her and help her. So she's fully dependent on God. And as a result, she lives with great expectation. She lives with this great expectancy that God will care for her, but also that God will rescue his people, that, they, that God will send a savior for Jerusalem, and not just Jerusalem, but for all the Jewish people and beyond for all peoples. So as she's celebrating, as she's worshiping, as she's giving uh, just, just incredible shouts of joy over this whole occasion, it's to serve as a second witness to affirm that what Simeon said is true, what Simeon said is from God, and what Simeon declared about this, this ordinary baby is that he's an extraordinary, miraculous keeping of God's promise. And though it will take decades to that, for that promise to come to fruition, the reality is those who hear can hold on to it as hope. Those who hear can hold on to it as expectation that God will continue to keep all his promises and God will continue to be active. Though it appears it, it, it will take some time, God can be trusted. That's the same for us today. When you're waiting on God to keep his promises, when you're waiting on God to, to bring you help, to bring you care, to bring you answers, to bring you a direction to go. You just have to continue to live with that hope as you wake up every day and, and know that God's in control and that God loves me and he hasn't forgotten me and that somehow, some way, he'll bring the answers I need, he'll bring the direction I need, and he'll bring the resources and the provision I need. He'll perhaps provide people to support and, and, and uplift me. It's the way we can live as Christians, knowing that God has kept so many promises to, to us and he will continue to do so. So we live with hope, and the definition of hope biblically is confident expectation, that we have confidence that God keeps his promises once, always, and forever. So today, brothers and sisters, wherever you find yourself, if you're struggling uh, with the holidays and the, and the overwhelming uh, nature of this time of year, if you're just dragged down by emotion and sadness and, and darkness and grief, understand that you can live with hope. You can live with a confident expectation that God knows you, 
God cares about you, and in Christ, you will never be separated from God's love. So today, brothers and sisters, live with that confident expectation, with joy and with hope as we journey on together. Thanks for joining us for WordWise today.